Okay guys, so the first thing we're gonna do starting out this video is we're gonna erase we're gonna erase this whiteboard. Okay, we're I'm probably gonna erase a little bit later. It's gonna take me a while, but I'm so excited to freaking erase that whiteboard behind me. We passed step one. I am so, so, so happy I got my results yesterday with the pass, and I'm gonna take you guys through my journey, my MBME scores, kind of what my path was like, especially as a IMG, well, a US IMG student from St. George's University. So I started, um, I ended term five at St. George's December 2nd, and I got back home, got back to the US, and I started my studying around December 15th in hopes of taking my exam March, um, mid March of 2023. Fortunately, I did not pass the BSFCR. That is in my last video. Go hit the details for that if you're interested in it. So it did kind of set my timeline back, but I ended up passing the retake and really diving into my, my step. I think the number one thing is I started my step studying at the beginning. Again, I go over all of that in my last video. So by March, I was already feeling decent and I will talk about my scores, but I just was not hitting the marks that I needed to hit. And everyone is always like, well, what did you do? I was not scoring the 70 plus that the school wanted us to get. My rundown was I started with biochemistry in December. I read the section of first aid and then I went to boards and beyond. I went to physio, I watched those videos and then I did the Aki King deck. And I pretty much stuck with that for three months. Then I took my NBME starting in March. So I gave myself about three months of content review. It's longer than I would say the average med student is taking, but I really want to ensure a first time pass. Boards and Beyond was my most helpful. I use Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm. Those are the two. And I think the biggest thing is don't overload yourself with resources. If you've been using something for the last two years of medical school and it's got you through it, continue doing that because those are the resources that you know. Those are the things that are going to work. For me, it was Boards and Beyond. Some people find that to be too much information and that's fine. But if you kind of need that heavier content review in certain areas, I would highly recommend that. So I did my boards and beyond, and then I would go to my first aid and I pretty much read first aid front to back. I would quiz myself on the sections every single day. And then if you have a problem also making a schedule, I use the seven day free trial of Cram Fighters. I implemented all of my resources, the subjects that I wanted to really press harder on at the top, it kind of lets you organize it and it makes it for you so you can calculate in your break times, you can calculate in how many resources you're using, how many Anki cards you think you can get through in a day if you're using Anki. But I did find that very, very helpful. And again, they offer a seven day free trial. So just kind of go in, uh, put in your schedule, and then you can save the PDF files as you go so you're not paying every single month. So by the time March came around, my scores weren't there. I was still freaking out. So I did push my test back for the second time. And I dove into Pathoma. Pathoma was my, my biggest help. I watched Pathoma chapters one through three, three times before I sat for the step one exam. And then of course the entire thing, I did watch all the chapters going through kind of my months of studying, but also reviewing the MBMEs. When I got something wrong, I would go ahead, put that into an Anki card, study it religiously. And I also had screenshots of every single question that I got wrong so I could review those in files leading up to my practice date. And I felt that was very, very helpful because I, I was seeing these same concepts, not exactly the same questions, but the same exact concepts on the step one exam. So the MBMEs are super, super helpful. Of course, I used UWorld. I, I got through it all and then I got through it about another half time with my incorrects. And all of that was just, it was very helpful. So I will go, cause I know everyone wants to know the scores. So my baseline starting score for my MBME was a 54%. And then a couple weeks later, I ended up getting a 59. A couple weeks later, I dropped back down to 54. I got another 54%. And then I ended up getting a 55%. So at this point I'm like, okay, what am I doing wrong here? And honestly, just going back 
to your NBMEs, carefully reviewing them. Don't just read the question. Make sure you go back, even if it's just flipping back through first aid and reading what you got wrong, making an Anki card, making yourself actively recall that information because that is what's really going to help you on this test. Okay, so around April 24th, I ended up getting a 64% on my NBME. And this was closer to where I wanted to be. I initially wanted to hit consecutively 65% and above. And then my last one actually on May 1st, I've taken it up being a 62%. So at this rate, I have utilized all of my 25 through 30 MBMEs. I was freaking out. I actually went and did some of the old MBME forums, which were the forums uh, 20 through 24. And I did some of those just for practice and extra questions. I really felt like that helped me. I'm a person who is a very question-based person. So as long as I am seeing enough and being exposed to more and more questions, that was really helpful. Of course, towards the end, I took both the new and the old free 120 for me, as well as many other people. The new free 120 was harder. I got, uh, da, 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 let me see. I think I scored, I don't have it written down here, but I think it was actually like a 60% even on my NBME. And then my, my old free 120 score was a 68.9%. So I didn't exactly hit that 70%. And I pretty much utilized every resource I wasn't hitting it and I pushed it back to a third time two weeks out just to kind of get more of that review in and honestly I'm going to stress it again I think what really helped me was reviewing the MBMEs and just constantly looking at the information the high yield document images I know that there is a PDF file going around that a gracious student has compiled and just put in a lot of high yield images go and make sure you have a look at that and I think the last tip that I have is Melman PDFs. I, some people, despite everything going on, I'm not gonna put any two cents into it. The PDFs are great. The PDFs, the Arrows PDFs I utilize, the Immuno PDFs I utilize, those were absolutely gold for me and how I learn. So just to break it down one more time for you, of course, UWorld is always gonna be at the top. Make sure you're getting through UWorld at least one time. The next thing that I did was focusing on my NBMEs. I'm a big Anki user. I put those into a deck and again, use the Anki deck. I think it's like the V12 version, the newest version update. And then Sketchy, Micro, and Farm saved my life. About two weeks out from sitting for step one, I made sure I flipped through every single pharmacology section in first aid. And I looked at the drug and I just talked to myself out loud. The mechanism of action, the mechanism of resistance, and pretty much a highlight yield thing for me to remember. And I think dirty medicine on pharmacology actually helped a lot more than sketchy micro. So dirty medicine has a full playlist of pharmacology. I highly recommend going through that before your step one exam. But I just wanted to really get on here and say, do not doubt yourself. I think a lot of the people will just kind of get in your head and you're going to see all these scores, especially if you're on the crazy subreddits. I highly recommend staying away from those. Just don't discourage yourself. I did not get stellar scores and I don't personally recommend just saying, oh, you know, I'm just barely passing. Always strive for that kind of 65 and above margin and go in with confidence. Don't psych yourself out. Just make sure like trust in the process that you've been. I studied for six months. It was not my intent. I was planning on studying for only three but it is what it is because I got the pass out of the end. So just utilize a couple of resources, make sure you're doing UWorld. world, make sure you're focusing on those NBMEs, throw in dirty medicine, throw in the Melman PDFs if you need some supplemental things, make sure you're going over the high yield images and do active recall. That's gonna be your most important thing. And as always, I am very big on positivity and the journey because we already have enough stress and crazy stigma in the world of medicine. So no matter, if you're coming from a USMD, a USDO, if you're a USIMG student or a non-USIMG student, just know you are good enough. You can do this. You've already battled half the journey because you're sitting for step one. So you've conquered basic sciences. Just believe in yourself, do the work, put in everything you've got, and it's going to pay off in the end. I always am welcome to your questions, comments, and what you would like to see. But other than that, I wish you guys the best of luck. Ask me any questions. I always have my Google Drives open for our SGU students who are looking just for some supplemental information for terms one through five. I'm gonna to try to get that updated while I have a little bit of time, but you'll be following me soon in about a month and a half on my clinical journey. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. I'm gonna finish erasing this whiteboard 
But as always, thanks for joining, subscribing, and liking, and I'll see you soon.